This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video over on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2. This time I'm playing with the Jax Knights yet again, and hopefully we have a little bit better of a time than we did last time in terms of uh, me being able to properly place cards where they need to go. Uh, and doing things of that nature. So my opponent has one rock, paper, scissors and is electing to go first, which is perfectly fine. Uh, this is actually a deck that I actually don't care if I go second with uh, nearly as much as I go first. Um, because, like, this this is another deck kind of like Mermel, where it's just like, it benefits itself going second and all that sort of stuff. That's a breakthrough skill that I'm going to have to respect. Um, but I do have access to my wind-up rabbit type card, uh, the Purple Dusk. And so he's summoning Raiden, and he's going to mill cards. I've got access into Scars Caused by the World Legacy, and I've got both traps. I've got the Spell and Monster Negator traps, and that's good. It's very good. Um, does Breakthrough Skill specifically only uh, happen during main phases? Um, let's see. During your turn, except the turn this turn. Okay, so any point during his turn. Um, okay, so is he going to Synchro or Link? That's the question I have. Um, he's synchroing in the Stardust Dragon. Alright, well, that's not going to do you much good. I'm going to beat over that. Um, but you do get access into Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. I actually really like the concept behind the deck that he's playing, uh, but not for making Stardust Dragons. I really like playing like Light Sworn with the baby with the baby dragons, so that you can um, so that you can uh, banish Eclipse Wyverns that you milled, and you can search for Light Ray Diabolus and, Light and uh, Judgment Dragon. But then you link away with these cards. You don't synchro with them, you link with them. Uh, so, like, he just ended with a Stardust and this, and that's kind of not really that amazing. Um, so, we'll, we'll just go with that. So, this, I can actually summon this, uh, beat over, neither of these are level 7s. So, what we'll do is we'll activate this. I'm going to activate this, adding uh, Scars Caused by the World Legacy to my hand. I'm going to set a card here. I'm going to Special Summon the Azure Blue out of my hand there. And this one can move around, so that's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to set this uh, Whisper here and special summon this in face of the Stardust Dragon. And then I'm going to play my Scars Caused by the World Legacy. I'm going to attack over the Stardust and attack over the, uh, the Collapse Serpent. And so then I'll be able to banish this, get a level 7 to my hand, and then Sacred Swords it away. Um, or I'll be able to discard it. But I think I'll take it towards the level 7 away and then see if I draw a monster, which I can discard for Scars. Um, so that, that sounds like it's, it's a little bit more RNG, but it gives us, uh, gives us the, uh, most chance of, uh, drawing into something, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But, so this will attack that. You'll take three, the Stardust will die. And then this will attack over the Black Dragon. And things should be fine in terms of my positioning in this game. I'm going to go ahead and banish this during this turn, because um, the, this one isn't going to be able to move around in le uh, if he uses the Breakthrough skill, but at the same time, that means that he soaked up the Breakthrough skill on it. Um, so, <laughs> things to consider. Um, so that goes away. He can add another White Dragon to his hand, Wyver Burster, and that's fine. Um, so now, main phase two... I'm going to activate this, banishing itself to uh, to search. In fact, I probably should have banished a Blue, honestly, but seems kind of inconsequential. But I'm going to get Crimson Lotus here, uh, and then I'll Sacred Swords it, and that way I can draw into either Key or any more of my uh, monsters, and uh, that would that would allow this to be live. Okay, that's fantastic. All right, this works. Um, so I'll activate this, discarding Crimson Lotus to draw a card, and that's another Scars, which I could play, but I think I would rather just not, uh, because I've got access into two of these cards. I could normal summon this in some zone, uh, but that's not going to be super duper relevant. Yeah, I'm just fine with ending my board here. I'm going to just control this game state, uh, because I've got access into Monster Negation and Spell Negation. So that's really good. And uh, and one of them can boost. And this can move itself around. Galaxy Cyclone. Bitch, please. Um, 
so you're targeting this. So what I'll do is I'll activate, I'll attempt to activate this effect to try and uh, move it and see what happens, right? Um, he's breakthrough skilling it, all right? So what I'll do is then, then I will chain this, increase attack and defense, yeah, sure, why not? And then I will chain this, summon my level five or higher monster, and I'll summon it over here because Galaxy Cyclone still destroys the target. Um, regardless of if, uh, if the target is face up or not, uh, because it says destroy that card, uh, it says destroy it. Um, so like he's already targeted a card and it says destroy it. Uh, now next turn his Galaxy Cyclone is going to be able to banish from grave and get rid of one of these. So that's a bit of a problem for me. Um, but at the same time, I think I'm fine because my wind up rabbit monster, my purple dusk comes back, uh, and I have access to a bunch of stuff. Okay. So he's summoning Eclipse Wyvern. He can banish for Wyver Burster. He can link or synchro. Oh, no, he can't synchro. He doesn't have a tuner. He can link away with these. Uh, this will um, this will trigger searching, but he is nowhere near the right number of monsters for Judgment Dragon uh, because he would be able to search it now at a hand. Does he have anything for Dark Armed? No, not even close to a Dark Armed either. Um, making Dark Rebellion. That seems like it wasn't worth unless you already have another copy of Black Dragon Collapse Serpent in your hand, in which case I guess it works. Uh, but still, this, I don't agree with this particular line of play. Um, I don't think that this is the most value you could have gotten at all. Because uh, you're going to do this, that's going to trigger, yeah, sure. But then, like, I, I have the capability of getting these cards the next turn anyway. Um, so, searching Dark Armed, alright. You have zero Darks in Grave. This is the first Dark that you'd put in Grave, outside of a Black Dragon Collapse Servant being the second, so... I'm not too worried about the Dark Armed. And so, uh, yeah. Alright. Cool. Uh, I think this game is pretty much stitched up in my favor, because I summon this, uh, this blue sky here next turn, get a search for the, uh, for this being here. And then, uh, and then I just have my, uh, Purple Dusk come back somewhere. And this can move wherever I want it, or can move anything else wherever I want it, because it is still on the board. So, yeah, seems easy. Uh, and that's Flickering Flame. Uh, let's see, what does this thing's actual effect do? Destroy the battle or leaves the field, you can special summon a jackknife from your hand. Okay, that's that's not something that I need to worry about, per se. But So I'll put this way over here, and I'm going to use Scars to discard the Flickering Flame and try to just draw a card. And so that's a yellow bloom, which we can work with. I can special summon the blue sky, which I will. I'll special summon it here, uh, which I can then use its effect. And using its effect, I will be able to add another copy of Crimson Lotus to hand, which I would then be able to summon. Um, so yeah, I say yeah. We'll add Crimson Lotus. And so what I can do here is I can actually activate the, uh, the Purple Dusk's effect, banishing the Blue Sky. And then uh, I can summon the uh, Crimson Lotus. But I can also get this and get multiples of these on the board, which is definitely kind of what I want to do, because these can move around. Uh, so I'll special summon this here, just for more damage. And then I can activate this, moving it, uh, moving it specifically to another zone. So I'll move it over to this zone. And then I can special summon this yellow bloom here. And then I can use this azure blue because this is not a hard once per turn. This is once per turn per copy. I can move it to the next zone over. And then I can special summon the crimson lotus which I can then use to destroy his Dark Rebellion. So this this is this is game over on this turn. So we'll banish the Flickering Flame, the Dark Rebellion will go to the grave, and now this is a game shot. Unless he plays some dumb shit like Gores, which I mean I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, he's playing he's playing Light Sworn. So Gores, Trag, those are sort of options that could be considered pretty premium. Um, 
But even if he does like gores me or whatever, I could um, I could make the 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 fucking uh, Jack Knight Link monster that one, and uh, just make sure that it's unaffected by things. Because I have so many things that are coming back. In fact, if I didn't kill him this turn, I would definitely be making the Jack Knight Link monster because I have uh, a monster that is coming back off of this next turn. So I'd want to keep that there. Alright, so, I've won game one, good. Now this side deck is the most generic thing in, in existence. <laughs> so, um, keep that in mind. Alright, so I'm going to put in Ash Blossoms, because I'm going to be going second again, I believe. Uh, and I'm going to take out the Flickering Flame, because it's not really important. I'm going to take out one of the field spells, because going second sucks. Uh, I'm going to take out, take out, take out. I don't want to... I get in the habit of wanting to take out Upstart Goblin, but then at the same time I can't really take out a card like Upstart Goblin because I need to be able to set cards and then search. Um, he's playing... He's playing Lysworn, so I don't think that back row is going to be a huge thing. So I'll just take out a, a Yellow Bloom, and we'll just go with this. This seems fine. This seems fine to go with against a deck like Lysworn. I mean, I really only have to deal with like one back row at a time, really. Uh, the only back row that I've seen that he would play is, uh, is, uh, what, um, was it? Breakthrough skill. That one. Um, so there's a set, and is that gonna be it? Usually, if people are starting their turns with setting cards, uh, that's usually not too, in too, uh, conducive for their play structuring being very good. Uh, but, so I've got Blue Sky, which is actually really good. Um, what are you, oh, you banished it for Darkness Metal. You're playing Darkness Metal in your in your Light Sworn deck. All right. Well, is it even Light Sworn? I haven't seen a JD. I mean, I've seen Light Sworn monsters, so I guess it's just Light Sworn dragons, which I guess is a more relevant thing that I could call this deck. Um, regardless, uh, let's see. I have scars. Um, I have this, which I could easily just discard. Um, yeah, I'm going to set this. In this zone, I am going to attempt to special summon my Jax Knight of Blue Sky. Well, no, first, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna special. I'm gonna attempt to special summon this here, and try to get a search for one card. Um, because we'll see what this is. It's either gonna be a breakthrough skill or it's gonna be something else. All right, cool. That. Um. Uh, excuse you. Excuse you, phone. I did not want that. In fact, I have you on silent. How did that happen? How did you even give me that notification? How did you force that through? Tell me your ways. Tell me your tales. All right. So this is here, which means I can uh, I can activate it um, to get Thousand Eyes Restrict up here, and I'll use it to suck up the Darkness Metal, which he summoned for no reason. He summoned this Darkness Metal for zero reason. <laughs> I just now realized that he summoned that for absolutely no reason other than to summon it. I'm a little heated. Um, but so I can activate Scars, uh, um, which boosts this. And this will go up to 24 if I summon it. Um, uh, let's see. Well, it'd go up to 24. Uh, I'm not able to kill my opponent this turn, which is kind of upsetting to a degree. But, same time, uh, you know what? I'm going to use this to get rid of this and try to draw a better Jax Knight. That's not a better Jax Knight, but it's still fine because I've got access to this. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we will go into battle phase. Um, Link Karibo has like 300 attack. Yeah? Oh, this can't attack because of instant fusion. I suck at this game. <laughs> it's whatever. Um, I'm just gonna make the Link Karibo with this. Uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll set these... I'll set this. Just this. Um, and I'm setting it here because that forces my opponent to summon into these two zones if he wants to have something that's not, like, there. Um, and then we'll pass turn. The Link Karibo protects my blue sky from dying, essentially. Uh, because it, you know, you, you can't beat over it. It's a Link Karibo. It makes things zero. Um, and this can revive the Jax Knight that I, dis uh, that I discarded. 
into an appropriate zone to negate my opponent's monster effects. Now, ah, well that's a cost, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with that. <laughs> that's a cost to mill. We're not we're not gonna fall into that trap. <laughs> no, no sorry, Bob. Okay, so yeah, light sworn like chaos dragons is what this guy is playing. Chaos dragons, chaos dragons. I forgot that deck was a name. Um, I forgot that that was a name for a deck. Um, was Chaos Dragons, so not very optimal. Definitely not by 2017 standards. Uh, battle phase, you say? Um, well, I'm not in the business of taking unnecessary damage, so I guess I'll just chain and I'll make your card trooper zero. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the business behind this is. Um, but this can revive a card. Uh, his hand doesn't seem to matter. This all seems very all well and true and good to me. Why are you you're suiciding the card trooper here so you draw a card? <laughs> all right. Um, if you want to take 23, then I'm not going to stop you. Not going to stop you at all. If you want to draw a card that badly, then God bless. <laughs> all right, so. I can flip this at any point um, to bring back the uh, the other dude. Okay, your your turn is over. What an underwhelming turn of events. This is all of the negation nation. Uh, these are all the, <laughs> the negation nation. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So uh, the question then mind. Well, I can't summon anything. Uh, so. 57, this is 23, this would be, uh, this would be for, uh, how much would this come out of, 24? This is exactly 57. <gasps> Fucking neat! <laughs> Alright, we'll go with this. I'll, I'll take this. I'll take this cheesy game shot. Um... I didn't. I did, couldn't remember this guy's attack value, and I just didn't want to like look at this to see how much the boost was. So yeah, all right, cool, cool shit. I don't think your deck's built for the challenge of dealing with the slowest deck from the future meta. Oh my. Wait, what? Oh, it's only forty-seven. It's not fifty-seven. I suck at math. I suck at this game, man. I suck at math. Okay, well, luckily for me. We can deal with this in uh, in ways. <laughs> we can deal with this in ways that are uh, that are conducive to good health. Because I still am not afraid of anything that he has. And if he tries to activate something like Charge the Light Brigade or whatever, I've got an Ash Blossom for it. Because that's the only thing that I could see him activating that would like really set up his grave. With these chaos monsters, because he currently has no light monster in grave. Oh look, a galaxy cyclone. What are you targeting? You're targeting that? All right. Well, I guess I'll just go ahead and chain it then. Increase attack and defense. Yeah. Um, has to do this one because it has to be level six or higher. Come on. Come on. There you go. All right. So galaxy cyclone is negated. I have to deal with that next turn. If he gets around to his next turn, he's got a breakthrough skill in grave and a galaxy cyclone, but neither of those matter. Um, alright then, <laughs> this seems pretty bog standard, I could, uh, I could get rid of these if I wanted to, into, ah, oh, hmm, yes, uh, well, no, not worth, not really worth at all, to be honest with you, well, I could, I very well could. And I very well will. Um, so I'm going to summon my tokens over here. Give him the grinder golem. Um, I'm going to summon... Uh, you know what? I should have summoned it over here. Then I could make a caching condition. I could have bounced this to hand. Summoned it. That would have been infinitely better. I suck. I suck at this. I suck at this. I suck at this. Uh, so we'll special summon the other Link Karibo. Make a Kashik Magician Special, and I'll put the uh, the Grinder Golem back in my hand, and then I can summon it again, if that's even something that I wish to do. 
Do I wish to do it? Possibly. Um, because this is here, which means I can make Firewall Dragon. Um, <laughs> I can actually just make Firewall Dragon with these cards, and then bounce the Grinder Goal into my hand. Um, that that would be neat. That would be neat indeed. Um, but I don't think it's what we uh, what we are going to be doing to win this game. So yeah, we'll just we'll we'll go with this. We'll just attack with this. This is. This is more than enough nonsense. Like, this negates monster effects in... These negate monster effects in this column. He set this here. Um, okay, so that's just a card trooper. You're just gonna draw a card. That's fine. This is fine! Oh, yeah! Uh, let's see. So, Akashic Magician can attack directly, and that should be the end of the game, unless he has literally Battle, battle Fader, like, right here and right now. Uh, so yeah. Interestingly enough, uh, turns out that Chaos Dragons can't compete in 2017. What an odd predicament. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, the entire basis of Chaos Dragons and like the, the Chaos Dragon Lightsworn decks of 2012 was to establish soft locks that your opponent had hard times dealing with. And that was usually with Pulsar and Darkness Metal. Now, the reason that that was so good back then was because we didn't have generic rank 4s or just generic extra deck monsters that were forms of removal that would break that string of play very easily. Like, you had to deal with them. You physically had to deal with them um, in, like, two actions or two steps. But now, even as even as far back as 2014, we have access to, like, Silent Honor Arc, which could just suck up the Light Pulsar and then you deal with the Red Med. Like, or you suck up the Red Med and deal with the Pulsar. Like, there's... There's so many ways to break that soft lock now that Chaos Dragons have just not been a, like, a competitively viable deck in any capacity ever since, like, at the very latest, that the very latest the deck was possible to be played without, like, having infinite outs to your boards was literally uh, January 2014, because that's when Silent Honor Arc and Exiton Knight came out and things just got hard. Um, and then even after, even like further back in 2012, like Abyss Dweller, like that made it really easy to start outing the things as well. Um, like you've just got to think at Nationals 2012, we didn't have that many <laughs> good rank fours or rank threes in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, Seize monsters had only been out for literally like nine months at that point, and we didn't have a lot of generic ways to out that sort of a soft lock, especially considering that Darkness Metal and uh, Pulsar were both boss monster status in terms of their attack values, so they were very oppressive. But now it's not that big of an issue anymore. It's just how Yu-Gi-Oh! has evolved. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this match. I will probably play a few more with Jax Knights because I really enjoyed the technicality of it. It's a really technical deck. When you're playing, you have to be very, very you know, mindful of where you're putting things. And you kind of have to focus on it, and I really like that. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel and myself directly and you like the videos I've been doing and want to help my ability to continue making those videos, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support and it's worth infinitely more than a month of watching videos in terms of YouTube AdSense revenue because AdSense is very weird in terms of its system and it has its ups and its downs. But it also gets you access through the reward tiers to monthly giveaways for Yu-Gi-Oh! product as well as entry into my private Discord server where you can chat with me and a bunch of other people on a daily basis. So if any of that interests you, then definitely go check out the Patreon reward tiers that are linked in the description on that Patreon page. And I would thank you in, in, in uh, advance for any support that you would like to give. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual guys, Take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know, and you have my eternal gratitude as always. Thank you so much for the support, guys. You guys are awesome.